Hi guys, welcome to the Giant Snakehead Tank again. And today is something special. It's the first day of my experiment. It's gonna be about five or six months, basically till the end of the dry season. And we're gonna find out whether these giant snakehead deserve the destroyer reputation that they've got with a lot of people and whether they kill everything in their path. So we've got 10 snakehead in here. I'm gonna take out six, leave a selection of different sizes, four in here. Uh, hopefully they might breed in here, I don't know. Uh, and the other six are destined for their own pond. When I say their own pond, it's absolutely teeming with a selection of different fish that we've, we've caught from various areas and stocked from other ponds. So uh, towards the end of the dry season, after the lake has had its uh, uh, fixes done by Macro Man, uh, we're gonna drain the pond down and see what's left. Is it just gonna be six super fat giant snakeheads uh, with no other fish in there, or are they all gonna get on as happy as Larry? First thing I've got to do is select six to go out into the pond. Okay, just before I put the camera on, I measured the sub, and he or she is now 33 centimetres long. So put another four centimetres on since the last video, which I believe was about a month and a half. I think they're gonna slow down now because they're not a particularly long fish, um, but they do fill out a hell of a lot. So I, want a, I want the sub and another big one and then two of a different size. So let's have you. Time to get into the pond. Of course, the other reason I'm doing this is because it's the dry season now. We're getting into the dry season and the wild frogs are becoming quite hard to catch. So if we've only got four in the tank, I don't have to catch quite so many at night. That reminds me, the frog catching device video that Toon makes is uh, it's coming soon, guys. <laughs> right, how to get down here. There's a stepping stone. Here we go then. So in this pond, we've got Java barbs, uh, climbing perch, garamis, bagazil, which are, which are like a small white bait fish. Uh, there'll be a few little gobies in here that I haven't managed to catch. What else? Uh, a few tinfoil barbs, basoi, I don't know what, what the UK name for that is. Uh, what else? Uh, and some tilapia as well. So like I said, a lot of people are under the, oh, I'm not gonna say illusion, because it could be right, uh, that these will just absolutely decimate a local fish population if they're introduced into that, that water system. Uh, but we're gonna wait and see. I reckon five or six months is, um, a good yardstick to find out. Obviously they're not going to eat absolutely everything. Well they may not. If they breed, it's a distinct possibility I suppose. Very easy to spot if they breed. They're super bright red. Blood red they are, or the fry, and they stay at the surface. Right, let's let them go. Six dark destroyers, eh? I hooked one of these on a surface lure in the in the lake the other day. My God, totally airborne, hundred percent left the left the water. Look at those. You know, whether you love or hate them, there's there's no two ways about it. They are an awesome looking fish. Look at that. Toon's petrified of them. I'm not, not yet. I suppose when they get up to about forty pounds. Or maybe but wow if they stay like that on a surface that is something to behold isn't it eh i'm sure they won't know look at that fill your boots guys what a stunner now for about two two three months of the year these these four ponds near the house go very very clear so that would be a real treat if that happens this year. Wow, 
and having a good look around. Oh, I'm so glad I've done this. Brilliant. Right, no more skinny dipping with the missus in here. The other thing that will be interesting is that there's quite a, a healthy stock of normal striped snakehead in here. And uh, but most of them are smaller than these, and these these I am expecting these to to sort those out pretty pretty quickly. I don't know whether this one's excited or a bit a bit upset. They realise they're not going to have fresh frogs, sort of like spoon fed to them every night. So the one I did catch in the um, the lake by accident was a lot leaner than these. And the coloration was totally different. Yes, it was still a giant snakehead, uh, but the stripes weren't quite so prominent and they'd gone a darker green colour. So um, it was definitely, definitely a giant snakehead. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, they're, they're changing to, to match, you know, to, to, to match the surroundings for an effective um, camouflage pattern so they can get their prey easier. What I've been reading up on is when they start to get ready to, to breed then they'll go uh, almost like a black and then you get the iridescent blues and greens. When they stay a brown colour like this, it, it normally, and it's breeding season, it means they're a, they're, they're a single fish. They, they haven't got a boyfriend or a girlfriend. So uh, as soon as they start colouring up, I, th I think they've clocked one that they like and they're, they're hooked up uh, and then they get it on and then hopefully we should see these plumes of of giant snakehead babies swimming around the place. Some people's nightmares, I know. You know, if you, if you were growing fish to to eat and, and certainly to sell, then these are probably the last fish that you want to be introducing. But we want, you know, a nice, a nice mixed fishery. And uh, if they do take a stranglehold in the lake, then it's probably the only time that I would advocate overfishing. You know, it's a uh, surface lure fishing. I'm, I'm not, I'm not really an experienced lure fisherman, fisherman but uh, I've had a few goes now and it is just so exciting. These bad boys and the, the normal stripe head, when they hit these surface lures, well, it's, it's, it's just incredible when you, I mean, t up, until now, and up, up until now, all I've done is throw a spinner in after pike or, or big perch back in the UK or something like that. I'd had, a, I had one go in, the, in in Thailand a few years ago when Toon and I and my mum, we went at a raft on a on a reservoir for, for a couple of days. And uh, yeah, that, that we had spinners out and we were catching jungle perch, but it's not the same as when snakehead hit the surface. I imagine the same as um, people fishing for barramundi with poppers on the surface. So. Imagine that, 22 kg, about 40 pounds. That is going to be one impressive creature, isn't it, eh? Now, if this was a striped snakehead, this is twice the size that it needs to be for uh, for being sexually mature. You get one of those about four inches long and it'll be full of eggs, no problem. So tell us in the comments below what you reckon is going to happen. Uh, to give you a bit of a background, if, if you if you t just totally dismissive and it's fine it's you know it's, it's your opinion no problem with that if you if you think they're just gonna obliterate everything here's a bit of a heads up i had put over 20 climbing perch in their tank over two weeks ago and i just drained it down cleaned it and took these out there's 15 left in there so you know there's nothing else in there for them to eat only frogs in the evening and uh, sometimes when we've caught about 50 or 60, we'll put the whole lot in and the next day there's a few left. So the, the next night we won't feed them and then the next day there won't be anything there. So um, yeah, they've had ample opportunity to, to uh, eat these climbing perch. What I think may be a factor in the future as far as them killing other fish goes is uh, when they do have a brood, you know, when, they're, 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 when there's a, a shoal of fry that they've got to take care of, uh, then they become very, very aggressive. Then a lot of the the guys that specifically fish for these fish they don't fish for anything else. They're, they're, they're totally obsessed with them. They'll look out for the balls of fry on the surface, and they'll they'll put their their frog across there and skip it across through the ball of fry. And normally mum comes up and hits it. Uh, quite often they let them go. They'll they'll they're in their their boats with their little electric outboards, 
and they'll go back out after the uh, the ball of fry and they'll pop mum back in and then that's it she'll go off with the kids again uh, very very protective and that's why numbers can take hold very easily from what I've been reading about you know in a, in a water system that doesn't have something like chow prior catfish I was going to say alligator gar but obviously that's not a native species out here you know but they haven't got any natural predators themselves certainly when they get bigger um, then the survival rate of their young is incredibly high you know and they become active predators themselves at an early age the good thing is these are quite used to me not as much as they used to be because once we switched over to frogs of course we were catching the frogs at night so feeding them at night they couldn't really see me uh, but certainly when we were giving them the croaking gouramis out of the crayfish pond and uh, the shrimp and all other stuff we were feeding them daytime and then as soon as you walk to the tank they they come up to you like they're a shoulder tilapia so this created two experiments in one go in as much that the four that are remaining in the tank what's going to happen there because i've left one smallest with the smallest one in there is that going to get picked off by the others eventually uh, to date we've had two um come to a grim end through cannibalism uh, i i think they'll be all right uh, and whether they all breed in there or not hopefully we've got two of each i've just guessed uh, uh, even if we've got a, a three and a one then we'll see what happens if it becomes quite clear that we've got just one breeding pair then i'll whip the other two out but we'll have to wait and see on that one if we can breed them successfully in in this pond here then that that'll be fantastic because they'll get used to me feeding them probably with chopped fish and fish guts and fish heads and that from what we catch out the lake um so they'll be easy to catch and uh, oh snakehead every week i am predicting that they're going to initially lose a little bit of weight over the first few weeks or month or so due to that they have been really spoilt rotten and they haven't had to work hard for the food so uh, I, I reckon now they're gonna have to actually hunt hunt for real that uh, they're not gonna be quite so gluttonous always guys thanks very much for watching don't forget in the comments pop in there what you think is going to happen when we drain this down in about five or six months